Tonight on the rise, why there's been a dramatic increase in overdose deaths nationwide and what's being done to stop it locally. Plus, short no more, why there's been a huge shift in our region when it comes to finding daycares. Plus, talks intensify. Republicans in Minnesota are trying to make changes to voting laws, why it faces an uphill battle. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Overdose deaths are on the rise. Between June of 2019 and May of 2020, the CDC reported more than 81,000 overdose-related deaths across the country. That's the highest ever recorded in a 12-month period. CBS 3's Emma Quinn shares how Twin Ports Police Department say they're working to make sure this doesn't become their reality, especially during the pandemic. While the Superior Police Department says they didn't see a big spike in overdose calls and deaths in the last year, they say any increase is too many. In 2019, the Superior Police Department responded to 45 opioid-related incidences. Six of those calls were fatal. In 2020, officers responded to 55 opioid-related incidences. Seven of those calls resulted in a death. Superior Police Community Resource Officer Bradley Jago says between May and September last year, they administered the opioid overdose reversal drug Narcan 20 times. Jago says that's a relatively high number for a five-month span, adding the pandemic and continuous isolation has likely played a role. Taking into the fact that people are locked up, um, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, people are having to stay indoors a little more often, not be able to see their friends. I, I certainly think that that would add a level of um, stress to, to individuals. The Superior Police Department has a program called Pathways to Hope for those struggling with addiction. Douglas County residents can sign themselves up at the Superior Police Station. If they are charged with a misdemeanor drug-related crime and complete the program, their charge can be dropped. The Pathways to Hope program first began in late 2018. Since then, 65 Douglas County residents have completed the program. Thanks, Emma. Coming up at 10, we'll hear from the Duluth Police Department about what their opioid calls looked like last year and the concerns they have for this year. A mass vaccination clinic for 15,000 teachers in the Twin Cities area opened this morning, but not without some major issues. Appointments are at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. But many teachers who were supposed to be prioritized have been waitlisted after schools sent out far more invitations than the number of doses available. Governor Tim Walls announced Monday that 15,000 doses would be made available to Metro School staff and child care providers over the five days of the event. There will be 36 vaccine stations capable of providing 375 shots per hour. But St. Paul school officials say Share, sharing of an online sign-up link was more widespread than it intended. In a major turn of events today, Wisconsin's mask mandate will be staying in place after all. Today, the Republican-controlled state assembly was expected to repeal the mask mandate, but lawmakers changed their minds, deciding not to vote on the measure at all. This comes after criticism from the state's health, school, and business leaders. There was also concern that the move would jeopardize more than $49 million in federal food assistance. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says he thinks the legislature will eventually repeal it, describing the mandate as government overreach. But in most of the parts of Wisconsin, people are following it because they know it's the right thing to do. They don't need a dictate from the legislature or a dictate from the governor. The mask mandate, which Democratic Governor Tony Evers put into place in August, is set to last through March. Nine states in the U.S. do not have mask mandates. The fight has heated up over whether Minnesota should tighten its election laws or make voting easier. A key Senate panel backed a Republican proposal to require voters to present photo identification. GOP members say it would increase voter confidence in election results rather than prevent fraud. But Democratic Secretary of State Steve Simon blasted the effort, saying an ID requirement could disenfranchise hundreds of thousands of eligible voters. Democrats who control the state house are opposed to the proposed law, which means it will be very difficult to pass. 
And let's get a look at the weather real quick with Dave. Dave, slightly warmer out there today, but still a, a definite chill in the air. Yeah, in the afternoon it became warmer. It was another yeah. brisk start this morning with some towns up north going towards 27 below again. Oof. I'll show a map of that a little bit later on here in the newscast. But right now, let's take a look at the upper Midwest, specifically our region. And that Arctic high pressure system that we've had for this week it's starting to draw back. It can't stay cold forever. It moves to the south, it starts to warm up, and then it withdraws. And, of course, throw in the spin of the earth, it's trekking towards the east as well. And bottom line is it's leaving our area, and clouds are now returning tonight, and that's going to help keep temperatures up. Only a few towns are going to go below zero and only by a few degrees this time around. Well, the clouds are increasing, of course, because of a low-pressure system getting closer to our area. And it will bring a chance for some snow, perhaps Saturday night into Sunday morning. Very much a replay of what we had coming around last week where we got that overnight Saturday snow that ran about one to three inches. How many will we get this time? I'll show you a map on that in a few minutes as well. But our short-term forecast says for Friday it should be mostly cloudy with only a few flurries possible. High temp of 22 is a little warmer than normal. We'll get warmer than that for the weekend, and I'll talk about how far we'll go coming up in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. There seems to be a big shift happening in the Northland's child care scene. Data shows four years ago, our region needed 5,000 more child care spots to fill the huge demand. Now, daycare providers tell us it's been tough trying to fill any open slots. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez spoke to Northland Daycares about what they've experienced and what advice they have for anyone wanting to get into the business. Going into it, I thought, great, I'm going to fill up right away. But for whatever reason, it's kind of crickets. Myla Doty from ESCO thought she was on the right path to opening up an in-home daycare. I know people are looking, it's just, I'm not sure, I can't quite fill in the blank there. Doty got licensed and was certified to take care of 10 kids, five of them being her own children. I've been licensed since May. Eight months later and the only thing missing are the families. So I've been advertising for a while and all my spots are still currently open. I Doty says she attended a Carleton County meeting in 2019 where she was told the need for child care was great. I believe it was 640 unfilled spots at the time. Now Doty's left with a new business in five open slots. And she's not alone. April Westman, owner of two aunties child care locations in Duluth, says in her 11 years of providing child care, she's never had any issues filling up spaces within 24 hours of advertising. Even us with our, you know, our history and, and reputation and good program have had troubles filling spots. Westman says they had high turnover at the start of the pandemic. Almost half of their families left and they also laid off two teachers. Westman believes the slowdown stems from the pandemic. They're staying put. They're not moving. They're not changing jobs or daycares. Westman advises those who are thinking about starting an in-home daycare right now to get experience first. Maybe going to work at a center in the meantime might be a good idea because you're going to get tons of the great experience working with kids, leadership and guidance from the people who have done this for a long time. And then, you know, when the time... If you're interested in learning more about child care options in the Northland, you can head to our website. We also learned today Minnesota is currently surveying child care providers around the state to get an updated idea of need and capacity. Second Harvest says it saw a big jump in people needing help feeding their families last year. From 2019 to 2020, the food bank says need increased 8% in northeast Minnesota and northwest Wisconsin. That translates to more than 13,000 people needing help and double the number of children. Second Harvest increased its food distribution efforts, setting a record with 6.2 million meals handed out. Organizers say they're happy they've been able to meet the growing demand, but they are worried about the year ahead as the pandemic continues. In just a few days, the annual John Bear Gree Sled Dog Marathon will kick off as dogs and mushers take to the trails. But one rookie musher has a very special connection to the race's namesake. Marsha Eink is the great-great-granddaughter of John Bear Grease. After spending her life watching and volunteering at the races, last winter she decided to train for herself. After partnering with a local kennel, she will be racing in the Bear Grease 40, her first ever sled dog race. But her goal does not stop there. I actually want to uh, run the full Bear Grease before my 50th birthday. So I came late in the game, so I got to step it up. 
for this year, Ayank is just excited to hit the trails to carry on her family's legacy and to start building one of her own. The Bear Grease starts on Sunday at Billy's Bar in Duluth. And a reminder, spectators will not be allowed due to the pandemic safety precautions. But we will be bringing you the coverage from the trails starting Sunday night at 10 o'clock. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, despite the cold, many folks are getting out and enjoying the outdoors. How you can do that at Glensheen, coming up next. Today's record low was 37 below from 1966. This morning, some towns got towards 27 below, and I'll show you who those folks are, or were, because the warm spell is coming our way to displace the cold snap. It may be a bit on the mild side. Now, turnabout being fair play, there could be some snow tossing in between, and we'll talk about that too right after the break. Live, local, CBS 3 News at 6 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS 3. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS 3. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly healthcare feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Dr. Brett Friday, medical oncologist at Essentia Health, explains the importance of oncology clinical trials. One of the big reasons that patients are part of clinical trials is to learn how to treat cancer better. And I think there's an altruistic benefit for every cancer patient who's receiving treatment. You know, they sort of reap the benefits of all the patients who are part of clinical trials in the past. We should always strive to get better. And that's what trials are. It, it's striving to get better. It's learning more about the cancer. And, you know, as an institution, I think Essentia's culture fits with that ideal. And I know that myself and my colleagues and everyone in the Cancer Center really feels that way. Clinical trials through Essentia are safe thanks to multiple levels of independent review. And they afford patients anonymity. Our rural geography in north, you know, northern Minnesota is a different population than is present in, you know, Manhattan, New York City. And so if we want results from a cancer trial to really be broadly applicable to all those populations, you have to have patients participate from all of those different areas. As medical director of the, of the, of the research program here, um, that's what makes my job worthwhile. Many people you know, believe that being a cancer doctor is a very difficult job, and at times it really is. But there are also really gratifying things. And when we participate in trials and when we get results back from those trials that change how we treat, you know, how we treat cancer and improve cancer treatments, you know, that's what drives me. Essentia's commitment to research helps deliver the best care possible to patients. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. To learn more about this and other health topics, visit EssentiaHealth.org slash Medical Insight. When most people have ended their day, ours is just starting. Good morning. I'm Jenna Wells. When news and weather happen overnight, we're there. As stories break in your neighborhood, you can count on us to bring you the details. For scores and more, we've got you covered. Hi, I'm Kelly Hinson. Why? Because the news that matters to you matters to us. Plus, this is our home, too. We're live. We're local. We're CBS3. What's up with you, Mom? Out of nowhere, you quit your job last month and want to talk about it? It's complicated. Whoever told you that life would be easy, I promise that person would lie to you. This new side gig of yours is raising questions to CIA. You don't want to ask. I don't work for them anymore. What are you? Some kind of ex-cop? I'm the one you call. You can't call 911. Watch The Equalizer, February 7th, after the Super Bowl, on CBS. CBS 3 News is brought to you by Fond du Luth Casino. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Heritage Window and Door. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. One more chilly one. That's what we had this morning. But it should be the last one. It'll be a lot warmer come tomorrow morning with the coldest of the cold only going towards 5 below. 
This morning, we had 27 below in a string from International Falls to Orr over towards Ely. Moderated a little bit as you head did to Silver Bay down Highway 1. 26 below at Hibbing Chisholm Airport. Usually colder at the airport than either of the towns, but pretty chilly even in town. 11 below Grand Rapids, 15 degrees below zero in Solon Springs, 14 below even for some parts of Superior, 12 below Ashland, 13 below in Hayward, but 4 to 8 above in Michigan. And most of the rest of us could go that way come tomorrow morning. So, yeah, the heart of the cold snap. It snapped away and it's migrating someplace else for a little while. Right now, 12 above at the airport's fairly balmy. Easterly, southeasterly winds running 7 miles per hour and 30.56 inches of mercury is our air pressure for the time being still on the higher side. But a low is coming in to replace the retreating Arctic high pressure system. So clouds will go up, temperatures will go up, snow chances will go up, and air pressure will go down. 6 degrees above zero, that's what we have in Waters Meet right now. 11 for Ironwood and La Pointe, 12 in Ashland, a little warmer for Hayward and Solon Springs, and even warmer in Superior at 15 above. 18 for our friends in Moose Lake, 10 for Two Harbors, down to 3 though, Ely. 13 still for the Quad Cities, Eveleth, Virginia, Gilbert, 10 above for Hibbing Chisholm, 13 Grand Rapids, down to 6 International Falls. It's the northern border country that could go towards 5 below tonight. Otherwise, the rest of us should be running about 0 to maybe even 8 degrees above 0. Big turnabout for those temperatures. Sky conditions turning around as well on the sunnier side past couple of days, especially in Minnesota. But now that the Arctic High is going up towards the north and towards the east, clouds from the west are filtering in. Slight chance for some flurries tonight, especially on the south shore, but this time around the north shore may get a couple of lake-enhanced flurries as well, and those could continue through tomorrow as the sky stays cloudy. The low-pressure system coming our way likely will be here in full force come Saturday, but by saying full force, this is not the biggest system. It's uh, upwards of a 40% chance of payoff, and if it pays off with snow, I think most of us will run the range of roughly two to four inches. Some towns undercutting just a little bit, others going over just a hair. If anyone's going to go over, it could be parts of the North Shore where we might tickle six inches. Otherwise, it's a light to maybe bottom end of moderate snowfall. Very similar to what we had last Saturday night into Sunday. Now, tonight into tomorrow, this is what Minnesotans get. Five below to 10 above with a mostly cloudy sky. Mostly cloudy for Wisconsin and the UP with low temps there, 4 to 7 above. For tomorrow, 22 to 25 above for Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula. Mostly cloudy sky, southeast wind 5 to 15. Normal high temp is 20, so we go to warmer than normal as early as tomorrow. Minnesota numbers will run from normal 20 near the International Falls area to 25 by the lake. And so, now, with our extended forecast, the chance for snow is probably Saturday afternoon into early Sunday morning, 30 to 40 percent chance, and again, two to four inches for most towns spread over two days. Um, be careful, of course, because even that little amount could slick up the roads, but it's not a huge blizzard. Another chance for precip, though, Tony, comes around next Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. And with temperatures pretty close to 30, we may yeah. even have to throw in a touch of a mix. So we go from bitterly cold warmer than normal. After a long dry spell there with almost no snow, we've had quite a few chances in the last week or so. Yeah, they've been little chances, yeah. but uh, hopefully they're adding up to something the Bear Grease can use and For sure. all those other winter sports enthusiasts we have yeah. around here. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Glen Sheen is helping visitors check out the mansion's 12-acre estate in a very unique way. Every weekend through March, all members and tour guests who buy a full mansion tour can snowshoe the grounds for free. The mansion has been offering this for the past few years, but with so many more people getting outdoors this year, Glensheen staff are expecting increased turnout. This year is really special because a lot of folks are looking for those outdoor activities, and Glensheen is really happy to be able to offer that opportunity for folks. Glen Sheen staff say Glen Sheen is the perfect place if you're new to snowshoeing because it is flat with wide trails. A new campaign is urging people to get outside this winter, but in a safe way during the pandemic. The Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails Commission launched its Mask Up and Mask Out initiative today. They're encouraging Minnesotans to get outside and explore the many amazing parks and trails the state has to offer. But they're asking you to do so with a mask on and with COVID safety in mind. Because it's still a good idea to stay socially distanced and masked up for when you do meet people in the outdoors. So it's a takeoff on the really good advice from the Minnesota Department of Health to mask up. But we're saying mask out. Get outside, put your mask on, and wrap a scarf around your face and get out and enjoy it. 
Matson says not only will the mask keep you safe from COVID-19, but it keeps your face warm on those cold Minnesota days. By the way, Minnesota's statewide mandate requires masks in indoor areas, but through this campaign, wearing one outside is suggested. Coming up in sports, UMD women's hockey is back to Amsoil Arena this weekend. Kelly is in with a preview coming up next. Move snow with your new John Deere from Duluth Wanted Sport. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to the Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's make healthy happen in 2021. Join for $1 going on now through February 2nd. For more information, visit anytimefitness.com. Angie's Closet is a consignment boutique that carries designer brand women's clothing and accessories in all shapes, sizes, and styles that are friendly on your wallet. Come let Angie and her team style you from head to toe in an outfit that is just your style. We feature fashionable accessories, locally made candles, and more. We are honored to have been voted the best consignment store in the Northland for 2020. Angie's Closet appreciates you shopping local. Shop in-store, online, or curbside pickup. Tower Avenue, Superior. I'm Caitlin, and I'm into nursing. We have small class sizes, so we actually get to know each other, know our instructors. All the faculty at Lake Superior College, they're here to help you succeed and choose the right path. Join us weeknights. We're live at 5 as we go around the Northland, city by city. Skilled trade workers are the backbone of every community and also the Army National Guard. Soldiers get paid training to keep the power flowing, engines running, and supplies moving. Army National Guard soldiers are learning skills that can set them up for success with companies looking to hire the best. The Army National Guard basically built my resume for me. Find out how you can learn a trade and serve part-time for your community and country by visiting NationalGuard.com. Mining. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. From environmental issues to economics and so much more. Join me, Kristen Bakke, every Tuesday for Ion Mining. A fair and unbiased report that answers the tough questions surrounding the world of mining. Eye on Mining with Kristen Bakke. Tuesdays at 10 only on live local CBS3. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association. Epilepsy can affect anyone with a brain. It does not discriminate. If you have a brain, you can get epilepsy. But here's something that's just as important to know. Anyone with a brain can affect epilepsy. So let's use our brains to do just that. Let's change the way people think about epilepsy. To find cures. Because if all of us can get epilepsy, all of us can end epilepsy. We just need to use our brains. Let's use our brains. Let's, let's use, use our brains. brains. Let's use our brains to end epilepsy. CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. Defensively, UMD tallied their best weekend this past series against Western Michigan. But like anything on Scott Sandal and squad, it can always be better, right? The Bulldogs held Western to just two goals on the entire weekend. This upcoming series down in Oxford, Ohio, the team is preparing for a similar gameplay from Miami. Sandlin has tinkered with his line charts throughout the year and spoke to the team finally starting to gel overall it hasn't been bad all year it's just you know just little things sometimes you have new lines new partners you know all those things that take time to get some you know to gel and get some chemistry but overall it's been it's been pretty good and i think that's probably been the one area of our game that from the beginning of the year that's probably been for the most part, the most consistent with the, with the exception of a few little detail things. Coach, kind of, we're kind of changing stuff up, like you said, down low and stuff, and I think it's kind of working for us. And we're obviously got to work on it, but I think as long as we do that, it uh, can only get better. 
I think it probably our best so far, but I think we can definitely work on it more. We have another jam-packed weekend of college hockey in store for this team. Both games against Miami University will be on the My9 Sports Network. Join us for Puck Drop on Friday at 6 p.m. and Saturday at 4 p.m. After graduating one of the best goaltenders in program history and a captain on defense, you certainly wouldn't necessarily expect the UMD women's hockey team to be putting up elite defensive numbers this season. But that's exactly what they're doing. A credit to their decor and a new netminder in Emma Soderberg that has stepped up in a big way. The Bulldogs have allowed just two goals in their last four games and have the best goals against average in the WCHA. At 1.2, they've made it ever made it very tough for even the best teams in the country to put goals on the board. I think it shows responsibility uh, in our game, uh, more of an emphasis on keeping the play in front of uh, our D, which we talk about a lot, maybe instead of <clears throat> making super aggressive, risky plays at the blue line. Well, I think having Emma back there has given us a lot of confidence. Um, we're able to make the simple passes because we know that we know that she's there to like support us. And she's definitely making the saves that we need her to make, and she's making the saves that she probably shouldn't even make. So it's definitely helpful to have her back there with us. And this weekend, they'll welcome St. Cloud State to Duluth, a team they outscored 9-1 to in their previous series back in December. And we've got high school hockey tonight on My9 Sports as I-Falls takes on Virginia. Here's a look at the rest of the high school sports schedule on My9 Sports for a full list of games and start times. Head to our website, cbs3duluth.com, and click on the Sports tab. Be sure to tune in for high school ho hockey highlights tonight in the CBS3 News at 10 and Thursday Night Face Off. That's going to do it for sports for now. Kristen and Tony, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Kelly. Tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, back in 2017, the 148th opened the Star Base program in Duluth. The program, focusing on STEM careers, caught the interest of many school districts. With the demand high, with the demand high Star Base demanded. <laughs> oh boy! Almost to the weekend, with Kristen. With the demand high, Star Base decided that it was time to expand. Tonight, we'll get an inside look at their new facility and what they hope to achieve. Is it the weekend? It's, it's getting close. That's not your fault, though. I saw the words on the prompter moving around. It, it's, they just jump all Magic. over the place sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, a couple hours south of the Twin Cities, you'll come across the city of Austin, Minnesota. Which some also refer to as the city of Spam, mm -hmm. as it is home to one of the most unique museums you'll find. According to Spam Ambassador, during a normal year, 115,000 people visit the Spam Museum even if they don't know what SPAM stands for. The SP from Spice and AM from Ham put it together for SPAM. A SPAM ambassador added they have people from all over the world come and visit, and even one couple from England got married inside the museum. SPAM lover, yes, no? No. Yeah, me either. Mm. Dave, can you take it or leave it? My sister used to live in Austin. I had a good side business going. She'd mail up SPAM shirts, and I'd sell them to the crew around ah, there. And there we you all go. supported our SPAM <laughs> shirts. I probably still have one. Yeah. A little too small, though, probably, <laughs> after all this time. Oh, after all this time with cold weather, it's finally going to warm up. We're going to 20 above tomorrow. That's where we're supposed to be. Clouds will go up as well. And from those clouds coming down Saturday and Sunday is a 30 to 40 percent chance for two to four inches of snow, followed by a dry up, but not a cool down by Monday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you uh, later tonight.